Well, welcome to another Bible Truth broadcast. I'm Evangelist Tom Young. I'm an itinerant evangelist that believes in expositional preaching. I like to do it line upon line, precept upon precept. I like to do it in a serious form. I like to do it with enthusiasm. It's a joy to have you on the broadcast today. I hope you'll have a Bible handy, notebook, something to write with. You'll find our text in the, the book of Nehemiah. We have now for some time been preaching a series of messages uh, from the book of Nehemiah. You remember Ezra has left Babylonian captivity. He has gone back and built the temple. And they have a place to worship. But Nehemiah over here, some men, he's still in the captivity land as a cupbearer. And he hears word that the walls lay in ruin. There's no hedge around the city. And he begins to seek the Lord. He begins to pray, cry out to God in behalf of this edge. And certainly if there's ever been a day when you and I need to pray and seek the Lord and put a hedge about those that we love and uh, those we care about, it is today. We've been preaching in these days on the, the little thought uh, that uh, the only thing that fuels my passion for Christ is when I make prayer a priority in my life, when it becomes so important to me, more so than anything else. We've already looked at a couple of areas. We looked in chapter 1 of Nehemiah at a prayer for an audience with God. And then on our last broadcast, we finished up the study of a prayer for the authority of God to have his hand upon us. Today we want to enter into some truths for the next few broadcasts from chapter number four. And I want us to see from this chapter, there is a prayer here for the attention from God. And notice the prayer, if you would, in Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 4. Nehemiah says, Hear, O God, uh, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Here is the prayer for God to give us an ear. Uh, to turn his attention this way. You say, why is that so important for God to hear us? i tell you one of the reasons why John says in his little epistle of 1 John 5 uh, that if we pray according to the will of God and he hears us, we have the petition wherewith we have asked for. So it's so important today to have God's attention for him to turn his ear this way. I would uh, draw our attention today to the necessity of attention. <clears throat> we see in the life of Nehemiah, there is the necessity of attention. I notice, first of all, that prayer is necessary because of their reproach. Uh, the Bible says in chapter 4, and verse number 1, but it came to pass, <clears throat> that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was raw. And uh, Sanballat and Tobiah were two governors of this land, one Jerusalem and one the governor of the Amorites. When they heard that this hedge, this wall, was being built around the city, uh, the scripture says they were raw. A little word means to melt down with anger, to snort. Can you imagine the world today hates God's people because we would pray and seek to have the attention of God? <clears throat> he says in verse number two, And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews. I was interested in this little word feeble. It means sickly, uh, drooped, one who needs constant uh, care and attention. 
Oh, how the world knows us today. We cannot get along without God. We need his constant attention, his constant care. It says in verse number three, now Tobiah the Amorite was by him, and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone. A fox is probably <clears throat> one of the lighter animals in its walk. He said, if a fox run over these walls they're building, uh, they would uh, crumble. Uh, the Bible said, blessed are ye when men hate you and reproach you. He said, rejoice, for great is your reward in heaven. They're not attacking us. They are attacking him. Uh, the Bible said that they mocked them. Uh, they made fun of them. They made light of them. I was thinking the other day, I was listening to a CNN broadcast, and they were discussing the roles of a woman. One of the ladies on there was a Christian, and she said that she wanted to be a helpmeet to her husband. And the announcer laughed. She said, I, that's the most foolish thing I've ever heard of. And oh, how the world thinks that the things of God are foolish. I tell you today, Satan laughs at our religious toil. He mocks at our religious wisdom. But I tell you, Satan trembles when someone prays in the Holy Ghost, makes prayer a priority in their life. <clears throat> That's why Satan has come so hard after Nehemiah. They have made prayer a priority. Prayer is necessary because of reproach, but I see that prayer is necessary because of retribution. He is calling for an imprecatory prayer here. He is praying judgment down upon these people. I tell you, before you and I step out, David often prayed an imprecatory prayer of judgment upon his uh, enemies, uh, but make sure prayer is a priority lest that turn back on you. He said here that uh, turn their reproach upon their own heads. Uh, lead them into captivity. Uh, he said in verse number five, uh, look at this. This is powerful. He says, and cover not their iniquity. He said, God, don't forgive their sin. I tell you, if their sin is not forgiven, if it's not blotted out, they're going to hell when this is over with. Uh, David often prayed these prayers, and uh, oh, may we have much discernment. <coughs> may prayer be a great priority in our hearts uh, prior to praying such a prayer. We ought to have a great burden for the needs of people that God would turn them. But oh, my friend, when we realize if God puts it in our heart that they're not going to turn, and, and they'd be better to be taken out of the way, Maybe God would lay upon our hearts uh, uh, to pray that God would remove some of his enemies so that the gospel can go forth in great power. There was a prayer necessary because of reproach. That was the prayer that was necessary uh, because of retribution. I was thinking again of Mary Scott of England, uh, the great queen, she one day made the statement about John Knox. She said, I would rather go up against all the armies of the world than to go up against one prayer prayed by John Knox against me. Oh, I tell you today, may the enemies of God fear that God's people would rise up and make prayer a priority in this hour. <clears throat> Not only do we see the necessity of attention uh, because of reproach and because of retribution, but I see prayer is necessary because of our reliance. He said in verse number six, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half there, for the people had a mind to work. Oh, where do we get the mind of Christ that we want to enter into the work of God of praying a hedge about his people. We get that mind through prayer, <clears throat> through relationships with the word of God. 
He says in our text uh, down in verse number 9, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. They made a prayer. That little word prayer is to go to him on the behalf of another. Has the idea of being a mediator, touching God and touching that person and being a channel through which God can work in their life. He also said he set a watch. And that little word watch is to hedge about, to guard, to protect. I thought it was interesting here, the scriptures. Do you notice which one comes first? The prayer comes first, then the hedge. We cannot have a hedge around those we love, those we think kindly of, without first making prayer a priority. But I was thinking about this thing of the necessity of uh, our attention, and the attention is seen in our reliance. Oh, how prayer so depicts our reliance and our dependency upon Christ. Uh, oftentimes in the prayer relationship, he tells us to come as a little child to a father. My wife and I was discussing this morning in our own uh, family devotions together. Uh, I was asking her, and she agreed with me. I, I can never remember a time growing up that I ever wondered if my dad could pay the bills. I never remember asking my dad, Dad, do you have enough money? Uh, do you have enough money for us to make it this month? I never remembered that. They had always seemed to take that. <clears throat> and I can realize having had uh, my own family, and even today as we have to pay things, I, I realize the, the one who handles the bills has that burden upon them. But uh, it never showed on Dad, and I, I never was conscious of it. Here today he tells us to come as a little child to a father, just in dependency upon him, that he will take care of us. There is the necessity of prayer and the, the prayer for an attention uh, from God. Oh, how we need his attention uh, today in our prayer life. Make it a priority. Well, it's been a joy to have you on the broadcast today. I pray maybe you would come and join us on our study website, Tom Gillum. Dot com. We have many Bible studies there. Have a daily devotion there. We are musing, meditating through the book of Matthew. Have an audio section there and a hook up to these YouTube broadcasts. TomGillum.com. Come there and study the Word of God with us there online. Uh, let me remind you also, uh, if you have a prayer request, something I can help you pray about, uh, or if you're interested in meeting, I'm an itinerant evangelist. You can email me at tbgillow at aol.com. Thanks for listening to the broadcast today.